Hi, Eric Gibo, ericgibo.com, and today, thanks to photosolar.com, I'm going to present you the Canon R6 at last. Okay, let's start. So, I already made a video about this camera when uh, the R6 and R5 uh, were presented. Uh, I will explain my uh, what I was thinking that was wrong, just reading the specification, okay, features, and uh, I made a second video after I leave you the links here uh, when I got insulted because I, I dared say that uh, there was a problem with these cameras but funny enough uh, the day after I published my first video Canon confirmed uh, that there were some uh, overheating problems and things that's a bit uh, not too good okay but never mind the important thing is I've got the camera now so I can give my opinion I made many pictures and video with uh, Claudia Reyes You'll see her in some of the making of, okay? And uh, so this way we could have our own impressions. So I will pass you pictures I've made and uh, I'll tell you the features and the, the impression. So let's carry on. So let's speak about this camera. Uh, first of all, uh, it came with a kit lens, which is a 24-105 uh, f4 to 7.1. I'll speak about a bit about this uh, lens that came uh, as a kit, as a kit lens and uh, i'll give my opinion about it but i'm going to speak more about the camera itself the features and everything my opinion uh, obviously i'm going to speak about uh, the main features not everything if you want to have the whole specification uh, you can go to canon website uh, and you have everything the same as i said with every camera i cannot tell all the features or always tell the the key one okay and uh, you can uh, check them there if you want so this is a full frame mirrorless camera with 20.1 megapixel a digic 10 processor uh, doesn't mean much if you don't know the digic 9 or digic 8 but this is the latest processor okay you have sensor cleaning and let's step straight uh, into something important it has ibis uh, image stabilization uh, this camera was probably uh, what the r uh, Canon R should have been, but this is the R6, okay? So I'm going to tell you a bit more. So the stabilization, I'll show you some uh, take I, I made. Walking slowly, testing the IBS. Now running as fast as I can without falling, of course. So still testing the IBS. It's okay, uh, photo-wise, photo, photo -wise, it gives eight stops. Uh, and I think it's good, it does give the eight stop. I think it's okay. And when we speak about video, uh, it's not as good as on Olympus. But, well, it's nothing as good as on Olympus, uh, stabilization-wise. I don't speak about the rest, everyone has their opinion, but stabilization-wise. And But I still think it's a very good stabilization, uh, photography-wise, and for video, it's not bad, okay? So, uh, congratulations, Canon, for stepping into stabilization uh, with this uh, IBIS, and it's not bad at all, okay? The autofocus system used dual pixel, and it covers 100% of the sensor. You can have your focus point anywhere. So, they've uh, really worked hard on the focusing autofocus system. You have eye detect, and also have animal eye detect. So this is really good for people who do animal photography, but there are some strange things. For example, uh, most cameras, my Olympus, a few G film I tested a few days ago, when you decide to have eye detect, it lets you pick left or right eye or any eye, you know? And I don't know if it's me, I didn't configure properly, but it just shows the option of any eye, not left or right. That's strange, okay? But it's there, could be better, it's there. Let's speak about the ISO. I think Canon has been late on the uh, ISO war. I don't mind because I don't think uh, the ISO is a solution photography, to photography, but for many people it is, not for me, but for many people it is. And uh, Canon was really late. So they've, give us, they've given us from 100 up to 102,400 ISO. You can actually force it to 50, and to 204,800 uh, 204, ISO. So I'm passing you some pictures. At 12,800, I think it's usable, okay, it's acceptable. And at 25,600, it is acceptable, but you do have some work to clean this. So if people were expecting 
100,000 ISO and completely clean, they are mm, wrong. I think they're crazy, but <laughs> they are wrong. Why? Uh, because uh, at first, I don't think actually you need it, except if you're a paparazzi spying at night. But uh, really, uh, even Sony, who claimed they're really, really good high ISO, I think they're better than this, but I think these are enough, uh, okay, to me, okay? Maybe you have a different opinion, but this is my, my opinion. Uh, if you look at the speed, it goes from 30 seconds up to one eight thousandth of a tech of a second plus bulb mode if you go with electronic shutter you can go higher then the screen is touchable sorry this way okay touchable and orientable uh, you can do some vlogging with it i'll pursue some vlogging test if you, if you want uh vlogging test uh with the Claudia in the background. So the sound is directly from the camera microphone, the Canon R6. And the screen is really good. Then you have the viewfinder. Yeah, you have uh, director correction, but I didn't even tell it in other language because uh, they all have it now. And well, on this uh, kind of range of camera. The viewfinder is really good. And you have two options. You can use it in 60 frames per second or 125 frames per second. Uh, the smooth mode it's really smoother okay but then it drains the battery really really fast okay so use the 120 uh, frame per second only if uh, you need this smoothness otherwise don't use it because you'll kill the battery basically flash well there is no flash on these cameras uh this is not a mistake this uh, this decision like uh, 5d 5d mark 4 mark 3 or this they never have any flash integrated flash but there's your hot shoe but that's not the problem the problem is i think the synchronization is really too low it's 200th of a second i think it's time for canon to put on this kind of camera like the 5d mark 4 mark 3 or this to have 250th of a second on this camera if you want to have 250th of a second you cannot use the mechanical shutter you should use the electronic shutter on the first court curtain so maybe you don't like that uh, i think it's time for canon to give better uh synchronization on the flash burst rate if you want to do a burst photography 12 image per second on mechanical shutter and 20 image per second on electronic shutter uh it sounds little 12 because some cameras do a lot better but i think it's enough let's be honest this kind of camera is a typical uh, camera a wedding photographer would use uh, instead of a 5d mark 4 would use that i don't think it needs more than 12 images per second so i think to me it's okay i don't complain about this uh, the files the raw files are 14 bits uh, depth which is uh, normal for a uh, full frame and also normal for APS-C, many people go to full frame because they think on APS-C there is no 14 bits. Yes, there is, there are 14 bits. It's on uh, micro four third, you have 12 bits, okay, so 14 bits. Video, let's speak about video. Honestly, I don't, I would prefer not to speak about video, okay, on this, uh, on this uh, camera. I'm going to do it because everyone wants to know about video, so this is why I do. So it does 4K and Full HD, both at 24, 25, 30, 50, and 60 images per second. One parenthesis, when you check your camera, if you do not get, uh, if you don't see 24, 30, and 60, or you don't see 25 or 60, it's same as Sony. You need to set uh, the format. In, you have to be in NTFC to get 24, 30, and 60, and you need to be in PAL format for 25 and 50 images per second, okay? So, it does that. But, if you're in 4K, UHD, you get only 95% of the surface, so you have a 6% cut. Well, 6% uh, crop, I should say. It's okay, it's really little compared to other systems. But if you want to use 4K with uh, a downgrade, it actually captures in higher than 4K and then it downgrades to 4K 10 bits to get better quality, then you get 62% of the surface. So you use almost half, okay? Well, yeah, 40% you lose, okay? So uh, the crop is massive, you need to know that. It does Canon Log 1, so if you want to color grade afterwards in post-production, yes, you can with Log 1 and then 10 bits. And also it does HDR video. 
I remind that HDR video only is uh, possible when you well you can do it always possible but to watch it properly you need an HDR screen or TV or whatever so if you don't have an HDR device you will not see this video as HDR okay back to uh, speed you can do slow motion at 100 and 120 mh per second in this case you will be able to record during 7 minutes and 30 seconds when you record in 4k and full hd it's limited to 29 minutes 59 seconds okay uh i don't know why they, they put the limit when they, they don't need to do it anymore but well they still do okay so this was the video side of it i'll come back to it uh in my conclusion conclusion then a uh, question many people ask and now i will start to tell when camera do it or don't do it it does focus stacking focus bracketing it means that when you make a picture especially macro is really useful uh, it makes several pictures and it shifts the focus point so after you can stack all the pictures together and then you get everything in focus because you make a picture of a fly you don't want to have the tip of the leg you want to have the full fly in focus okay so this way it's possible it does time lapse and then there are strange things in this camera when you go to a Canon description of uh, what it does, the specs, you go to point 12, at least in Spanish, I don't know what point in English, uh, it says it has a light weather ceiling. And I think it's strange. What, what does that mean? Light rain, uh, a bit of humidity, a lot of humidity, but no rain, uh, a bit of dust, but not too much. What does it mean? I mean, when you get to that kind of price range, that uh, that uh, uh, the type of clients you want to get with that camera you have to offer a proper weather ceiling uh, i don't think this is correct to have a light ceiling this is not enough let's speak about connectivity you have usb-c wi-fi bluetooth hdmi with a micro uh, type d connector microphone connector headphone connector then if we look at the memory the memory card double slot and both are uhs2 which is really good because very often cameras have one uhs1 and one uhs2 so it's both to have it's good to have both uh, uhs2 you know i think it's more logical another limit like, like i don't understand you can record video only to one sd card not to both so if you want to have a backup it's not possible you just record to one card uh, i don't understand what the reason but that, that that's another strange thing by, by canon okay if we speak about the battery you have two kind of battery you can put in there okay this is the one that comes included i'm going to read this is the lpe say six sorry this is the lpe six nh but you can also put the lpe six n and so if you get the better battery you get uh, if you use the screen then you get 510 pictures out of a full charge if you use the viewfinder then you get 380 pictures and if you use the viewfinder in smooth mode 120 frames per second then it drops to 250 image per charge video wise 4k you get 90 minutes and full hd you get 120 minutes i think the battery is too little uh, most people use that kind of camera they they're not they're, they're not making picture with the screen they use the viewfinder uh, imagine you want to use smooth mode and many wedding photographers nowadays they make 2250 uh, or 2500 uh, pictures in one wedding i'm not discussing if it's too many pictures whatever this is not the debate here i speak that there are many people making 2500 pictures during a wedding it means if they want the, to have the smooth mode they need 10 batteries for that this is absolutely crazy they need to get a, something better it's true you could get a grip an extra battery all this but one battery this is too short to me okay good news if you already have uh, canon lenses you can using an adapter mount your ef lenses and you get them to work perfect but you can also mount your efs lenses but in this case, you get a crop of 1.6. But it's still good news because uh, before you would not be able to mount your EFS on a full frame camera. Now you can with this. So this is uh, good. You can with this with a mirrorless, I suppose with the Canon R also. The weight is 680 gram 
uh, with battery and cord included which is okay for that kind of uh, camera so my opinion i think my opinion i'm going to give you more things not just features i've said i've told, I've told the the most uh, important uh, features and spe specification now my opinion and what i've observed i think uh image quality wise they've done a really good work uh getting back highlights and shadows is really 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 good i think it works really good it's really nice i think uh, so image quality no complaint at all I do think you will be happy about the color about everything color if you work in raw file in a way you could tune it as you want but I think quality is good the camera itself I think this is the perfect um, handling it's really nice it's not too big not too small even Claudia who has smaller hands I don't have especially big hands but she has more smaller hands she would she was able to handle it really nice I really love where button are placed they're placed exactly where you need them to find them i mean you have the joystick here under your thumb here you have the iso you can actually configure right? you have the iso speed or you can invert also here you have your aperture all this i think this is really well placed really well placed i mean i sold my uh, 5d mark 3 and 5d mark 2 about six years ago and i got this camera i felt at home it was it was like taking my having my 5d in my hands it was really i didn't have to think it was really easy really nice well placed everything okay one thing i really miss is a top screen i think a top lcd screen would be good i know the r5 has it it would be good to have it on this also because it's always nice uh, when you're doing a wedding you don't know if you have much battery left or whatever you just look at it straight down it's really really good I don't know why they didn't put it i mean i know why probably money wise or they want to sell you the r5 probably okay but well that's the way it is but this is good i was surprised by the video uh the rolling shutter is really limited i'll show you an example uh one day i'll make a video explaining what roller shutting is but more than what it is uh, why it exists and i think uh this rolling shutter is really well controlled so uh you will appreciate if uh you want to make video and your subject is moving or you are panning it would be uh, good to have a little uh, a rolling shutter uh, the stabilization i said is really okay and uh, there are some points uh, that surprised me a bit for example uh, when i made the videos before i was really uh, some people really get mad at me so i thought before criticizing anything i would uh, write it down then i would check other people's video on youtube see if they found the same thing and potato jet actually found uh, something similar so i'll leave you the link here and first uh it overheats at 4k 60 uh, fps and 10 bits it overheats after 30 minutes more or less uh, the autofocus in video is uh, not too good. Uh, I think I would expect to have it a lot better. Yes, he had the problem too. Uh, in video, it was losing the autofocus. But a worse problem. Uh, the log color uh, are really warmer than the typical Canon log. I don't know why. So it, it's hard. If you're going to record on two uh, cameras, uh, one uh, cine camera by Canon and this one is going to be too hard to match the colors and then there is a really big problem potato jet had I didn't have it because I didn't record as much as he did because I wanted to concentrate on the photography side of this camera is that it crashes but any camera can crash when you make video but normally when it crashes you, it saves the, flat, the, the file and you have uh, the, the, what you've recorded until it crashed but in this case it was not like this he lost everything first time he crashed after 20 minutes and he had an empty file and then another time with one minute an empty file again so imagine you you doing you're recording an interview and uh, you like 30 minutes recording and then a guy goes away or, or it crashes at the end and you've lost everything and the guy has no time to uh, inter let you do an interview again that's not possible this is something that cannot happen to any videographer this is simply not possible it cannot ex happen nor exist and in this camera it does happen so that's a serious problem imagine telling your client that you don't have their wedding video because it crashed at the end that's a serious problem and this is not acceptable 
and so uh, check what the link and you'll see it then strange things for example you can actually configure the c profile c1 c2 c3 but if i want to make a profile like uh, for a slow-mo i would set it on 100 uh, frame per second it doesn't let me uh, set it to the to, to this to the personal profile maybe uh, they will fix it on a firmware upgrade i hope so then other things that are really strange if i want to do a video uh, i don't want to be in manual exposure and i want to give priority to uh, the speed so uh, the app the, the speed value uh, time value let's say i want to be on 50 uh, 1 50th of a second because i'm recording on 25 frames per second i cannot do that i cannot do set that and have the rest automatic or i do fully manual or i can set the aperture but i cannot set it or i can put auto hot uh, iso if i want i put uh, i would set uh, uh, the auto iso that's possible but not the speed value which is probably the most important part in video so i don't know why and other strange things for example uh, by the way if you open if you open the screen to do vlogging here you will have uh, if you have some cable plug in it, it will cover the screen so you won't see yourself uh, it should maybe do the, the other the other way around i'm not sure but that's not too logical i don't know no, no, it's not my problem i say what i found it doesn't you cannot have the cable because it uh, it covers the, the screen okay then some strange things if you uh, switch on the grid so you can uh, compose easier you have your grid there if you want to move the focus points then the grid switches off so if you want to place precisely the focusing point on a specific part of the grid you can't because then you don't see the grid anymore so these things are really strange so for me this camera actually is not perfect because canon does not want to make this uh, doesn't want to make this camera perfect they want to sell you the next camera the following next camera which is stupid because if you're happy with this camera with this camera anyway you you probably will buy another canon camera at a later date so they could have made it perfect anyway so there are some features that canon doesn't put in there which is not logical canon must understand that uh, doing a mirrorless camera is not taking your best reflex camera taking off the mirror and that's it no thinking mirrorless is putting features uh, introducing features that you cannot do on a reflex camera why don't they have the high resolution uh, possibility that sony has with the, the uh, 7r or uh, olympus has or uh, hasselblad has why don't they don't they have the live composite that uh, olympus has it's great for a uh, long exposure why don't they have uh, live nd filters all this for patent reason well they can pay the patent canon has money i think they could give a really really good camera what you have here is more of a 5d mark 4 with no mirror and i think this is a pity i think they're able to make a lot better camera and canon has money i mean it's like sony this company two companies are probably the one with most money so don't have much problem to develop things and put things in there the policy of canon is always to protect their upper camera so they, they sell you some kind of camera they sell you could do cine with it cinema but then you realize no you need to go for the cine camera the one they give you is okay for b-roll but not as much for really full production so why do they do that marketing why don't you sell me a photography camera and not a video camera okay this is for photography so my conclusion is this camera is excellent if we look at the photography side of it who could buy that i think if you're a 5d uh, mark 4 mark 3 user or 7d and as a 7d mark 2 won't be uh, replaced by your mark 3 so you would be probably interested in this camera if you're not a canon freak uh, probably there are other options that probably better even for a cheaper price okay let's do a small parenthesis about this lens and maybe you will understand more what i mean by a canon policy we always have spoken about uh, paperweight referring to the basic 18 to 55 millimeter uh, lens that come as a kit lens with APS-C cameras uh, I know this is a bit horrible to say uh, uh, paperweight because you can do many things with these basic uh, lenses 
they are not the best, they're not focused too fast, they're not too sharp, but they're okay, they're acceptable for many beginners. But when someone wants to buy full frame, their aim is to go to another league, another level. So if you sell them a 24 to 105 millimeter f4 to 7.5, uh, 7 7.1, sorry, you're actually selling them a full frame paperweight. As always, when editing the, 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 the video, I review again, I check again all the pictures and I didn't make uh, that many pictures at 24 millimeter with this uh, kit lens. And uh, there's one I didn't pick or two I didn't pick. And actually it was with the blue sky, 24 millimeter. And then I see there is a massive vignetting. And uh, when the, it was dark corner in other pictures, they didn't see it. But on this one, I really see it. So actually, this lens is not a 24, 105 millimeter. It's a usable 28 millimeter to 105 millimeter. So, and then you're not at maximum aperture probably. So I, I think this is really a shame. This, this really shows again, uh, Canon policy that is uh, laughing at their clients. This lens should not exist because Many people buy full frame because they believe they will have a shallower depth of field, they will have access to a lot better lenses, so you cannot put a lens like this in the game. This is not a lens that is logical on full frame. So I don't know why Canon make this lens. I think it's, more, it's better to give away the adapter and have someone keep their EF lenses than to spend money on this. Even if it costs about 400 euros, this lens, I think this lens should not exist. So if you don't have enough budget for this camera and get a good RF lens, you're better off uh, not getting the, this camera, but getting a 90D if you want Canon and better lenses. This is my opinion. Otherwise, if you want full frame, go to Reflex by Canon if you want Canon, okay? So basically you go to a car dealer and the guy tells you, buy a Ferrari. And say, oh, that's okay. Okay, that's fine. And the tires are optional. Oh, how much are they? Well, a set of tires about 4,000 euros. What? 4,000 euros? I cannot afford that. Don't worry. We have some wooden tires. Wooden tires, wooden wheels for this car. So, okay, then I'll buy it. And then you get your Ferrari with wooden tires. This is ridiculous. If you want a Ferrari, you can be able to pay for everything. Otherwise, get a small humble car with proper tires. Same thing for this. If you cannot afford the full price of getting full frame mirrorless full frame with Canon then get something else or buy an APS-C or Micro Four Third and that's it no shame about that Claudia is saying that Canon is one to know my opinion if I would keep my Olympus or this Canon honestly uh, I think this Olympus uh, is better for what I do I prefer it but I have to publicly recon uh, admit that this R6 as a photographic camera is really good so my conclusion, uh, would I recommend this camera? Yes, I recommend this camera for photography. Would I recommend for video? If it is not your main activity or you use it for short things, vlogging, for example. I think if you want uh, to do video production, I don't think this is the right camera. There are other options. I would prefer to go to Sony for that. Okay. And you, Claudia, what do you prefer? The Olympus and the uh, 5 Mark III or the Canon? Well, she says she prefers the Olympus for what she does. So, as a photography camera, yes, this is a great camera. There are other options, but still, if you want Canon, this is a good camera. The question is, is it better this or the Canon R? This costs about 900 euros more than the Canon R. If you need stabilization, yes, this is the camera to go. If you don't want stabilization, don't need stabilization, I think the Canon R at the price it has now is a lot better option okay but still this camera is a great camera with its limit and the problem is not the limit of the camera the problem is that many people do not speak about these limits then if you look at the limits maybe it's a bit expensive but this this was my opinion thank you very much for watching the video thank you claudia for helping me and uh, giving her opinion thank you very much photoscrap.com for lending me the camera 
If you feel this video may interest other people, please share it on social networks. If you have not done yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, the small button down here, and also a small bell. If you click on the bell, get notified when I upload a new video. My website, ericgibo.com. If you have any questions, can leave a comment below. And also below, I leave uh, links of my gear on Amazon, also links to other parts of my YouTube channel. Please take care of yourself and see you soon. Bye.